The Alps are 120 miles wide and span from southern France to Slovenia. The mountains are so foreboding that until the mid-1800s, people believed dragons and demons inhabited the glaciers and countless peaks. In 1690, the villagers of Chamonix, France, employed a nearby bishop to exorcise an approaching glacier that threatened to destroy their village. Eventually, though, their presence began to excite the curiosity of scientists that wandered into the mountains, not for the sake of climbing them, but to study them and the mysterious glaciers that crept down the valleys. While these first mountaineers carried barometers and thermometers, instead of ice axes and crampons, the mountains had begun to cast their spell over people's imaginations. The so-called golden age of mountaineering would be born here and no one mountain was more captivating than Mont Blanc. Mont Blanc is the highest peak in the Alps. It towers more than 12,000 feet above the floor of the Chamonix Valley below and can be seen from hundreds of miles away. It first entranced the aristocrat Horace Benedict de Saussure when he spied it from his home in Geneva. In 1760, Saussure made his first trip to the village of Chamonix, where he offered a reward to the first person to attain the heavily glaciated summit. However, the peak would defeat all attempts in the next 26 years, many of which included Saussure himself. With every defeat, though, the desire to conquer Mont Blanc became more and more an obsession. Saussure lamented in his journal, it had become with me a species of disease. My eyes never rested upon Mont Blanc without undergoing a fresh attack of melancholy. The local doctor, Michel Gabriel Pacard, treated many ailments caused by exposure to the harsh mountain climate. In 1786, a local farmer and crystal hunter named Jacques Palma appeared in his office ill and badly sunburned from an attempt on Mont Blanc in the few days before. Palma had tried to climb the mountain by himself and spent three nights at high altitude, a feat deemed impossible at the time. Forced by low visibility to camp the first evening, Palma spent the next two days attempting routes to the summit. All failed, but Balma was not disheartened. I felt quite certain I should be more fortunate a third time, he asserted. It was in Pacard's office later that day that Balma confided in Doctor the existence of the route. Like Saussure and many of the other early explorers, Pacard was a man of science, and when Balma approached him, he eagerly offered to join. They left La Côte on August 8th, 1786. They quickly negotiated the Bosson Glacier, spending the night between the Bosson and Taconnet. The next day, they attained the Dome du Goutet, Balma cutting steps into the ice until, Balma later reported, the doctor could go no further. Balma half carried Paca to the summit, where villagers in Chamonix below could see one figure waving his arms. Mont Blanc had been conquered, and despite the minor dispute between Pacard and Balma regarding who dragged who to the summit, Balma received credit for the ascent. Having claimed his reward, he became the first guide on Mont Blanc by leading Saussure himself to the summit the following year. The increasing number of guides and explorers began building stone huts, expanding access to the region in what is now the most extensive and frequently used system of huts in the world. In 1881, the physicist and alpinist Joseph Vallot undertook the construction of one such refuge, an observatory at 14,300 feet on Mont Blanc. When it was completed in 1890, it stood the highest structure in the world. Over the course of 40 years, Vallot summited Mont Blanc 34 times. Indeed, the growing world of alpinism concentrated around Mont Blanc. By this time, Chamonix was well known in Europe. 
In 1958, with the inauguration of the world's highest cable car, Chamonix became the undisputable hub of mountain culture.